The SWAC has produced Hall of Fame players and coaches that have shaped football as we know it today. But excellence doesn't stop the game clock for us. Since 1920, the SWAC has produced some of the nation's leaders, innovators, and trailblazers. Driven by greatness, bonded by tradition, and building a champion for life, we continue to submit ourselves into history. Baby, we are the SWAC. Hey everyone, and welcome to Cricket Swack Game Day, presented by Pepsi Zero Sugar. I'm Tolly Carr in Atlanta. Homecoming month rolls on here in October as we roll into week eight of the college football season. Can you believe we've been balling for two months already? Well, the young men on the teams have been balling. You and I have been watching, talking, eating hot dogs. Today's show is brought to you by Cricket. Smile, you're on Cricket. Pepsi Zero Sugar, official partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Well, we had that big matchup last weekend. It might have been a power shift out west, but in the east, we're going to have to wait to see if we have any shakeups going down as the top dog celebrates homecoming out of conference. We'll have more on that later. But first, let's level up with last weekend's scores and highlights. The SWAG scoreboard is brought to you by General Motors, official sponsor of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. All right, we had Fam versus Graham. It was a tight one. Fam U comes out on top, 20 to 16. Alabama State, they're back on the winning track against Mississippi Valley State last weekend. They went at 24 to nine. Jackson State all over Bethune Cookman. That game was in Jacksonville. Jackson State by 40 in that one. Southern over Alcorn State, man. It came down to a fourth down conversion. The defense held for the Jags. They went at 21-17. Alabama A&M over UAPB. That was a Sunday game. Bulldogs by three. So we had some really tight scores over the weekend. Let's start now with our highlights and the game that everyone was looking forward to and the one that did not disappoint. Alcorn State visiting Southern. We get more now from our cousin, our favorite cousin, Cousin D from HBCU Game Day. Baton Rouge, Louisiana is the scene as this football season starts to get to the real important games out west over here. Man, Southern and Alcorn, they looking like they trying to shake back from some rocky starts. Even though last time I was in Baton Rouge, Southern put up, what, 70-something points? What's up, HBCU Game Day family? It's your favorite cousin from Mississippi, D. James, and let's go ahead and get straight to the business. Both teams come in with key victories in the Western Conference because we already know who is SWAC on the Eastern side. So today's game between these two teams could really show or give us a, you know, premature look at what is to come. We head to midfield for the coin toss. All of that summed up in the Jaguars wanted to receive the ball. And from the door, them boys came out. But Sean McCray goes right down the middle, connects with one of his favorites. You know, big plays early in the game give any team momentum. Now, I know that was the first play, but they wasn't done. But Sean McCray hooks up again with August Petrie the third. This time, this was six points. Jaguars go up 7-0. Alcorn State running back Javarian Howard. That boy nice. He one of the top rushers in all FCS football. Alcorn State wants to get that boy going tonight, but Southern wants to stop him. Now the defense for the Southern Jags came up big all night. On this play here, you got number three, Corian Harris. That boy right there been balling all night. We gonna call his name a few times. He comes up with the interception, gives the ball back to the Jaguars. But Sean McCray comes right back and hits Petrie again. Back shoulder, first down. Now Alcorn did step up on this play. Number 32, Claudine Shearless comes up with the interception and he trying to go to the house. Alcorn kept the fight, but right here, my boy take a nice little lick. I'm glad they lifting weights down there in Lorman. Right here, Aaron Allen hooks up 26 yards to Malik Rogers. Touchdown. Alcorn 7, Southern 14. Now it's up. Bashan McCray cashes Allen on top. 
Southern 21, Alcorn 7. But it's not over yet because Alcorn comes right back. Aaron Allen goes up top 31 yards to Montario Hunt. Man, these boys grabbing the every, hey man, look, they going crazy. Alcorn 14, Southern 21 at halftime. At halftime, you know it's time for my favorite part, the show. The sounds of Dynamite came out, did they thing in an explosive way. And one thing about that human jukebox, I can't lie, they gonna go viral. And they drum major, that boy went viral. Hey, I'm glad I got to catch him on my camera. Southern Jukebox came out, put on a show. Let's get to the second half. The second half did not present as much scoring as the first half did. It was really a defensive battle. Southern's defense came up big plenty of times, and Alcorn's defense came up big as the offense for Alcorn tried to make some things happen. Alcorn State settles for three points. Right now, the score is Southern 21, Alcorn State 17. Alcorn State still got a little hope. But after that drive, that hope came down to a chain measurement, and it went in favor of the Southern. And with the game pretty much over, it's time to cut up in Baton Rouge, the only way that Baton Rouge know how. Southern Jaguars, 21, Alcorn State, 17. Even Coach Dooley turned up. Hey, it's your favorite cousin from Mississippi, D. James, and you're watching HBCU Game Day. We dropped too many balls today, missed too many tackles, just did not make the plays that we needed to make to win the football game. When you play a football team, uh, the caliber of Jackson State, you have to make the plays that are there for you to make. The plays that you're supposed to make, we have to make them. We didn't do that today. Uh, we had way too many miscues in all three phases, uh, and, and there's no excuse for that. God bless you, thank everyone. Sorry that we're tardy, if we are, I don't know. But a wonderful game, Bethune, through all the tribulations that they've uh, endured, put up a heck of a fight. What I mean by that, I just was talking to the head coach before the game, and it's unbelievable what they've endured over the last several weeks since the storm. And uh, praying for them, my hat's off for them. I wish I had known so I could have did what I could possibly have done to assist. But uh, I got a lot of respect, a lot of admiration for that team, for the coach for the university, for what they're accomplishing. Coach, what does, compared to maybe 2019 last year, what has Dion got them doing better? What are they, what are they doing better as a team that might not have been there two, three years ago? I, I just think it's the focus and the energy. Uh, when, when you have a college football team, we all have athletes, and uh, you know they, they do have a dominant defensive line. Uh, that's where it starts. Uh, and I think they play with a lot of focus, they play with a lot of energy. And you have to match that focus, that energy, and that discipline every play. Uh, because you, you can see us in spots playing with them, but if you, you know, not, you, know, you don't focus one play, uh, it can turn into a big play for them. Uh, so that, that's where we have to you know, we be better as a team. We have to make sure that we're continuing to focus and continue to be disciplined and not have, you know, it's been two weeks in a row. It wasn't as bad today, uh, but we did have, you know, two personal fouls that, that were, were critical uh, that took us, you know, out of good field position. And those are things that just can't happen. I've always been glad to come. I didn't want to come. I just, I just like optics. When it comes to HBCU, we got to give you the best optics we could possibly give you. So when they pan the audience on television, I like it packed. I don't like emptiness. So when you bring an HBCU team into a wonderful environment like this, I don't, the aesthetics are everything. But the fans support, um, it was phenomenal today. It was truly phenomenal and I'm pleased and I'm happy. I can't say I was encouraged because last year we had the most sacks in the league on him. Uh, we, we sacked him nine times last year. We just missed tackles today, which is, is, you know, a little bit upsetting to me because those are plays that we have to have. Um, 
We, we know we can get to the, the quarterback and, and we, we understand how to get to the quarterback. We just have to finish and we get there. Coach Vaughn Wilson, HBCU game day. Yes, Coach, sir. we saw Shiloh today yeah. uh, get back in. How, you, you had a smile on your face. Yeah. How, how was it to see him get back in action well, and how would you have been? nervous for the last several weeks in that practice, uh, but he's been working his butt off. I told him he wasn't ready last week. Today he got in and contributed so he could get back to being the old shallow and, and, and the starter. Uh, we're missing two guys like that in the secondary and we've still been pretty successful. You you figure a shallow, um, that's an all swipe player, whatever they call it. Then you got Travis Hunter, not even in the starting lineup on the defense. Um, then we got another gentleman, uh, Big True Thompson from Florida State that hadn't played as, as well. So that's three starters on the defense and we have a pretty dominant defense that's gonna help us tremendously. I don't, I don't think we were flat. Uh, I think you saw a good football team uh, take the ball and, you know, they, they made plays. So I don't know if it was it was us being flat. It was just them, you know, being a good football team and executing. And that's what good football teams do, they execute. Whatever you fear usually happens, overtake you. We, we, don't, we don't fear. We don't fear anything. We fear, we fear the Lord. That's the only thing we fear. We don't fear a man. No, we, we, don't, we don't function like that. Like we we go hard and uh, you got to understand we wanted to end on a positive note. That's the only reason we kept him in that long after throwing a couple of picks. We wanted to end on a touchdown drive. Then we got him right out after that. So that that was more of for him mentally so we could get on the plane and I'm not going to look at him like he's crazy because he sits right by me on the flights. Fam, you on the road at Grambling, Grambling, looking for their first win in the SWAC. Things looking good in the first half. Both teams swap field goals in the second quarter. A 3-3 ball game late until just before the half, Grambling gets on the board. Julian Calvez finds Lyndon Rash for the touchdown, 23 seconds remaining. Grambling goes into halftime up 10-3. FAMU strikes first in the third quarter. Jeremy Musa finds Jeremy Pruitt for a four-yard touchdown pass. An eight-play, 68-yard drive. We're tied at 10. Then it's FAMU again, 23 seconds to go in the third quarter. Musa on the short run. He's in the end zone. Rattlers up 17 to 10. Just over five to go in the fourth quarter on the punt return. Watch Donald Johnson work. Watch him work. Watch him score. An 80-yard return. Grambling pulls to within one at 17 to 16. They'll tie it on the extra point. They won't. Extra point no good. Still a one-point game. FAMU is able to seal the deal on a field goal. With 1.45 remaining, that makes it 20 to 16. Good enough for the final score. A tight one at Grambling, but FAMU holds on for the four point win. All right, we have a non traditional weekend this go around in the SWAC. A lot of non conference matchups on deck. So let's get into this week eight schedule presented to you by Rocket Mortgage. For an expert partner to help buy your new home, Rocket can. All right, Texas Southern at Alcorn State. Texas Southern has begun to play like a team that's in the football state of Texas. TSU is 2-2 two two in conference play right now. The division leaders are at 3-1, and one, so let's do the math together. The Tigers are still in it. Alcorn State suffered that tough loss against Southern, but at 2-1 and one in conference play, the sky is not yet falling. We went down there with the intention of playing a real good ball game. And, uh... It was a really good ball game. Um, I thought the guys really played hard. Um, you know, we had a couple, a couple controversial calls. Uh, not taking anything away from um, Southern, what they did. Uh, Duly had those guys ready to play um, in those terms. Uh, but we went out and um, came up short on the short end um, of the scoreboard. So um, that's where I leave it at. Uh, we, we can't change you know, what, what Alcorn does, they, they are uh, great up front. They get after the pass, they play with, with a lot of effort, a lot of intensity. Uh, we just have to match and be sound and, and uh, working together as one. Those five guys have to work together as one complete unit and, and keep our quarterback upright. 
Homecoming for the still unbeaten Jackson State Tigers, but no one in the SWAC will get the chance to play spoiler in Jackson this weekend. Their matchup will be out of conference against Campbell University. Now, if you're not from North Carolina, I am, you might be like, who? Campbell, who? Who's that? Well, Campbell is led by Mike Mitzer. He's a former safety with the Carolina Panthers, played a long time there in Charlotte, and the Campbells now are one of the top teams in FCS football. Jackson State, the number nine team in the country, FCS football. Campbell is in the also receiving votes category. Should be a good one. No cupcake parade at all in Jackson this weekend. Coach Mentor deserves it. I mean, he, he deserves the opportunity. We didn't pick him just because we thought we could beat them. We didn't pick him um, because we needed the attendance as well. We're going to get 60,000 at the game, um, and it'd probably be another 15 in the parking lot. So it wasn't that approach that some other um, schools may have those approaches. We, we don't function like that, but we know how other schools function. But uh, this is a tremendous opportunity for both teams. We're playing against an opponent that can come in here and uh, win. It's not an opponent that can come in here and lay down. We're, they're not going to do that. They're not taught that way. They're not built that way. They're not coached that way. So this should be a great contest, and I, I look forward to it. Bethune-Cookman versus Mississippi Valley State. That's the HBCU Go game of the week. Only one combined conference win between the two schools. So this is going to be an extra special win for whoever comes out on top this Saturday. Mississippi Valley State is the home team this weekend. Can they get it right at home? I know Coach Sims, man. I know he's going to do a good job of preparing his team. Um, a good football team. I just think, uh, you know, in cert certain times they – just missed opportunities or, or, or just um, a possession here, a possession there. Um, they, you know, they went, you know, they're, they're not a one in, uh, I think, five team right now. You know, they're, they're a good football team, you know, but, but, you know, coming back home and being able to play at home against, uh, in front of our home crowd, you know, it's going to be a good football game. I look forward to it. Um, you know, it's a homecoming week for us. A lot of people be coming back for homecoming. So hopefully our guys will be amped up and ready to go out here and, you know, uh, you know, get our first win at home this week. We have to continue to play, uh, you know, a, a whole football game. We have to finish a, a whole football game. And that's what we did not do. We, we got down early, like you said, and, and we, we have done that in the you know, last two or three weeks. Uh, not using anything as an excuse. Uh, but we wait till we get our backs against the wall and we, we start to fight back. So we're looking now, we're talking to our guys about starting fast and finishing strong. And that, that's what we're, we're speaking to them about this whole week because we have to find a way to come out of the blocks a little bit faster and, and to uh, continue that throughout the game and finish it strong. Prairie View a and coming off the bye week and they'll touch down in Beaumont, Texas, Lamar. That's who they're playing. They're a Southland Conference team currently sitting at 0-6 entering this game. We're, we're still there um, in the hunt, but again, we, we got to take care of business from here on out. And in order to do that, we got to be, we got, we got to be on our P's and Q's as, as one would say, you know, you know, consistently. Um, and again, if we, if you're not playing consistent football in this league, anybody can beat you. You know, and we, we have yet to do that, but again, it was all about guys, you know, coming into this week, you know, during the off week, getting healthy, you know, and going over plays that we that we screwed up on, you know, and making sure that these guys understand again, you know, do your job, do your job first and, and just let the defense, you know, uh, take care of itself. Because again, you know, many times when you don't do it, you know, bad things happen. So that was one of the biggest things stressed to these young men throughout this whole week. Just go do your job, you know, and let your athletic ability take care and let the game, you know, take care of itself. When Virginia Lynchburg is coming to town, it must be homecoming. You know how it goes. And yes, it is homecoming on the bluff as Southern University should serve up some red meat for the home crowd this weekend. But you always, always respect your opponent. But I don't think too many people out there are expecting this red hot Jaguar team to cool off this weekend. Earlier this year, you put 86 points on an opponent. Um, can we expect, if the opportunity presents itself, do you look for those type of results during homecoming week or will you tone it down a little? No, we, we don't, you know, we just try to play our brand of football. And, you know, I, I know it sounds like a cliche that uh, we try not to look at the scoreboard. We just want to play. Our job is once we get a chance to get out on the field, 
we got to execute at a high level because we got to always work on Southern University. It's not about the opponent that we play. We're going to play some worthy opponents that are very, very good. But it's about us, who we want to be, where we want to get to, and what's in our way. So we just try to go out and, and execute at a high level and try not to uh, look at the scoreboard. You know, we do understand. Our, I, I'm a very, very, in my, if I must say so myself, you don't like to give yourself a very high character uh, individual. So we're going to do what's right. Uh, that's going to help our football team, man. We're just going to play football to, to try to get better. Time now for the SWAC Players of the Week from their performances in Week 7. Players of the Week brought to you by Pepsi Zero Sugar, official partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Arkansas Pine Bluffs, Kayvon Britton, Alabama A&M's Dre Terry from Grambling State, Donald Johnson, and Southern's August Petrie. They are the SWAC Football Players of the Week. Let's take a look at the stats for our Offensive Player of the Week. Britton, he rushed for 200, whoa, he rushed for 277 yards on 32 carries to go along with four touchdowns during UAPB's game against Alabama A&M. He currently leads the conference in total rushing yards at 754. He has 12 rushing touchdowns, and he ranks fourth in yards per rushing attempt at 6.2. This also marks the second time this season Britton has rushed for over 225 yards in a single game. Wow. Defensive player of the week. Terry was a game changer during Alabama A&M's 34-31 road victory at Arkansas Pine Bluff this past week. That Sunday game, he erupted for 14 tackles and a 31-yard interception. His interception would come after the Bulldogs had previously retaken the lead at 17-14 at the start of the second quarter. It also set up the Bulldogs with an opportunity to extend their lead on their next drive as they pushed to a 24-14 advantage a minute and a half later. Our specialist of the week, Johnson, was a key contributor for the Grambling State Tigers special teams unit. This past week, he tallied 88 total punt return yards. Highlighting his efforts during the game was a key punt return for a score from 80 yards out in the game against FAMU. Newcomer of the week, August Petrie, a significant factor on the offensive side of the ball for Southern this past week against Alcorn State. He finished the night with 127 yards off four catches to go along with a receiving touchdown. He averaged 31.8 yards per catch while assisting the Jaguars with claiming a 21-21 to 17 win over Alcorn State on Saturday. All right, let's take a look at the standings. This week, we will start in the East. SWAC standings brought to you by General Motors, official sponsor of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Well, nothing is going to change this weekend in the East. JSU is unbeaten overall in 4-0 in conference play. They are out of conference this weekend, and FAMU and Alabama A&M both sitting on bye weekends. Alabama State also idle with the Magic City Classic on the horizon, and the only conference action going down is Bethune-Cookman and the last place Mississippi Valley State on the east side. Well, let's check in and see how they do on the west side. Southern and Prairie View are both 3-1 in the western division, but Southern has already beaten both Prairie View and third place Alcorn State. So right now the Jags are the team to beat at this point in the season, but we have more season to go. We talked earlier about Texas Southern sitting at 2-2 two and two in conference play so far this season. Arkansas Pine Bluff and Grambling have yet to win in a game so far this year in conference play. And finally today, there was some news out of the SWAC this week that could potentially impact games this weekend. The league office has announced multiple student-athlete suspensions and institutional fines stemming from the pregame altercation that transpired between Southern University and Prairie View A&M during their game on Saturday, October 8th. A total of 21 student athletes, 11 from Southern and 10 from Prairie View A&M, have been suspended for one game for their respective involvement in that altercation. After conducting a comprehensive investigation, it was determined that the student athletes involved in the altercation violated the league's code of ethics and conduct by committing acts of unsportsmanlike conduct. Now, additionally, the conference office has levied a fine against Southern in the amount of $7,500, along with the fine against Prairie View A&M in the amount of $10,000. The league determined that Prairie View A&M failed to comply with the SWAC's game day management decorum, which led to additional fines for Prairie View. All right, so that's it for this week's Cricket SWAC game day presented by Pepsi Zero Sugar. 
I'm Tali Carr from Atlanta, hoping everyone enjoys the games this weekend. If it's your homecoming, enjoy that. If you have one of those bye games, ooh, next week you really, really have a big one. We got some classics and more homecomings on deck to talk about next week. We'll see you guys then. Enjoy the weekend.